Yeah, John ja Morant. I started to draft him, but he's already spoken for. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, he's good at slamming it. Um, yeah, Mike is uh, Mike is downstairs working the, the draft. I've got a, a pretty big event I've got to get to uh, tonight at 7 to try to raise a little money for JDRF and, and my, uh, my oldest, Taylor. So um, good day for us today. You know, excited about the guys that we were able to add. Uh, Haskins there in the fourth um, quarter. Um, good size, good run style, downhill. Um, had a lot of good visits with him um, leading up to this process. Um, plays in the kicking game and just a you know, great, great dude. Uh, Chig spent some time with him at the East West, extremely smart, um, fast, athletic. Uh, excited that he was there. Uh, Phillips, the receiver, another guy that I spent quite a bit of time with at the East West Shrine game, tough cover. Um, plays mostly inside receiver um, and punt returns. Uh, Jackson, the DV, uh, local local guy, Overton, and was at our local day. Got to visit with him. Outstanding guy. The coaches at Tennessee, you know, when you're asking about their prospects, just continued to rave about Theo and what he meant to their football team. You know, he plays safety, plays some nickel, can play some outside corner, kind of a, a versatile piece there in the secondary. Um, and then lastly, there Campbell out of Ole Miss, um, transferred from Maryland, a tough physical uh, inside linebacker, uh, runs pretty good, um, should factor well on special teams. So excited about all these guys and, and what they can add to the team. John, What's maybe a, a sheer quality among all these guys? Like, well, why are these particular players, Titans players, fitting kind of your identity and what you guys want to establish? Yeah, I think we, we all, I mean, I like the way that they play. They all play um, with uh, a, a tough um, physical style of play. I mean, you know, I think, you know, Chig, even he can kind of get maybe typecast as this pass catching speed tight end, which I would say that's a strength of his, but. You know, there are plenty of, of, of games where you can see him you know, kind of put his face into a block and be competitive. Um, they, they all work hard. They're, they're, they're tough. Phillips is tough. Campbell's tough. Jackson's I mean, they, all of them play with a tough play style. Um, and they were all good, you know, really good in the interview setting. They came across as you know, team first guys, guys willing, willing, willing to buy into their role and, uh, and compete you know, to help the football team. Offensively, it's not like play strength is something new for you guys, but that certainly seems to be a trend with this class as well. Yeah, I think that um, you know the it's as as the game wears on, if you can play uh, a tough physical uh, downhill uh, style offensively, I think that tends to wear on uh, opponents some, um, and hopefully you can you know find enough points there late in the game when you know we continue to play with the effort and finish that we preach um, extensively here. And hopefully, kind of wear you know wear some wear some teams down. A comparison to be made, John, between a guy like Haskins and, and even like a Foreman in terms of style and, and maybe a role. Uh, as they well. play running back. Yeah, I think um, stylistically, I mean, he's uh, Haskins is, is more of a he's a downhill um, between the tackle stretch and stretch and cut runner. Um, you know, his his long speed is is good. I don't think he's going to be a four two guy in the open field, but. Um, you know, it's usually the first guy doesn't doesn't bring him down very easily. So, you know, like stylistically the way he carries the football. You guys added a handful of skill guys in the draft, added two in free agency. You also lost your top two receivers from last season. Do you think that right now you're at a better point surrounding Tannehill with weapons than you were at the start of the off season? Uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, definitely the you know that's what you set out in the off season is you. Um, you try to bolster the roster in, in free agency to what degree you can, you know, you can do that with the monetary resources that you have. Uh, and then you go into the, into the draft and, and try, to, to, try to attack that. So um, you know, we feel really good about where we're at with the football team. We'll continue to try to look and add. I mean, we don't, we don't play till September. I've said that, you know, several times. And um, if there's a player out there that can, can, can help us and it makes sense for us financially and fit-wise, then uh, we'll certainly look at it and entertain it. How important is it that with three new receivers coming in and Robert and the two that you drafted this weekend, you've got guys that Ryan's got to get used to and guys you've got to get used to Ryan, and with especially with two of those being rookies? Yeah, I think timing and, and, and cons, um, uh, confidence, you know, just working with, with guys um, 
knowing where this guy's going to be and how he runs the route. And, you know, they all might run it a little differently. You know, some faster players might get to a certain spot a little bit more quickly. So you got to let the ball go a little bit more quickly. Um, yeah, all of that takes timing and, and working with the guy and, and being on the same page. Offense six to nine. I mean, is that what you wanted to do coming in? Is that kind of the way the board fell? Is it kind of a combination of those those two? Probably a com a little combination of, of maybe of, of both, Jim. You know, we just, uh, again we tried to try to take the the best player um, that that fit our football team when we were on the clock. Um, and you know, there's some guys that you, that get drafted when you've got gaps, you know, in in between picks. There are certainly players that we like sometimes um, that 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 get picked. Um, and conversely, I'm sure there was guys that, that we picked that, that other teams liked as well, and you know they missed out on. The talent's obviously the most important thing, but you turned seven picks into nine the last couple of days. Were numbers important to you in this draft? Uh, I don't know that we set out, Dave, that way to you know take, hey, we were going to take, we needed X amount of picks. So we needed to take this pick and turn it into that. It kind of just manifested itself organically. I thought that... You know, to trade out of where we were in the first round, that certainly gave us some, you know, some some picks uh, to move around. Um, but it's always good when you can have extra guys, you know, especially like on a day like today when, you know, the guys that we took, you know, we feel really good about coming in and competing and, you know, carving out a role on the team. With Austin, so you, you look at a guy like like Theo Jackson. Looked like his numbers took like a really big leap last year, uh, and, and they maybe did some different things with him. What were some of the reasons? You know that that he had such a bump. Do you think? And did yeah, I mean, they, you know, they kind of they played him. Um, he, he played in the deep part of the field, and and he also played kind of in there at nickel, kind of closer to the core of the formation. So um, he was certainly assertive on a lot of those run plays. You know, when you're closer to the core, um, you you tend to get a little bit more action if the line can hold up and the ball can bounce out there to you. So uh, he wasn't afraid to throw it in there, and. Uh, and, and the same thing at safety, but you know, some, a lot of times when you're when you're back in your you know, middle field safety or your half field safety, that's you may kind of be the last line of defense, you know. Hence the word safety. So, um, I think maybe closer to the core may have affected that a little bit. With Austin and, and now Chick, how much do you feel like you kind of revamped, updated, upgraded tight end? Yeah, I think that the, you know I'm excited about you know looking at watching that that position group come together. You know, I think they all kind of have a little different skill set um, and they you know hopefully will play off each other um, skills to give us a couple different looks that that teams will have to try uh, to, to defend give a bullet point kind of on, on each how they differentiate on um, Hooper um, you know he, he's competitive at the point of attack um, he's a smart route runner he's crafty he's got good catch skills he's got good size um, Chig is, is, is speed, you know, stretch the seam vertical, get the ball in his hands. Uh, he's competitive at the point. I think he may have been the fastest tight end at the combine or something. Um, and who's the other one you asked? And Swain. Well, Swain was, was here last year. Um, can move him around a little bit. Played some at, he played at the point of attack, was competitive as a blocker, played some fullback, um, was productive in, in the passing game, you know, for us. So um, I think that all of them, have value on all three downs, and they're all kind of different. How was Chig as a blocker on the film that you watched on him? Because it seems like that the receiving part of his game may be the more polished part. Yeah, I think that's a you know that, that's the one thing, Terry. That and I was as I was watching back through him this past week, um, there were some games against really good competition where you know you would expect him to lose you know some of those one on ones. Um, and I'm not saying that he, you know, drove his guy 15 or 20 yards, but he occupied his guy long enough um, so that he didn't impact the play. And there were good players that he was kind of fit up on, uh, and he was able to stay engaged with those guys, keep their feet, feet moving, keep his feet moving, so that the defender really didn't factor in the play. And I think if you can, as a tight end, if you can kind of do that, then that's, that's usually a win for the offense. How much more comfortable did you feel with the process and your final board with the, the, the more traditional scouting process this year? Much. Yeah, much. I mean, when you've, when you've done it a certain way for 18 or so years, you know, whether it was a scout or when I transitioned into this role, you know, and then you go to trying to set up some mock thing in your, in your house and your Lysol and everything down when somebody comes in there and plugs in a wire and, 
and, and then you know last year it was it wasn't everybody wasn't in the draft room, so I couldn't look around and hey, is everybody good here? Any opinions on this? There's only so many people in there. It was just it's just it was different the last two years. So you know the full process that we were able to go through this year with you know being at the All Star games, having the combine, being at the pro days, being able to bring guys in for 30 visits, and then having a full draft room to kind of work the board on draft days. Um, was much more kind of what certainly I was used to. You're drafting in a position where you already have someone you know is capable of being a good starter, like Hooper at tight end, Tannehill at quarterback. Does it give you more license to take an upside type of guy, a plus athlete who maybe isn't quite so refined, knowing you'll have a chance to groom them? Yeah, I think you're you're always looking. Again, I talked about it, you know, last night and and and, and Thursday as well. Is 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 competition at the position. Um, but but certainly when you've got some players, because it's I mean it's a big transition to go from the college game to, to the pro game. Some guys do it quickly. Some guys it takes a little bit more time. Uh, certainly we have veterans and you have a you know culture and a chemistry uh, from a team standpoint that are going to work with those guys. You know they know they can see the veterans can see when these rookies are come in here and they start working with them like, oh this guy he can do this or he can do that. And if and we tell them all the time, show up on time. You know, earn the respect of your teammates, and that's the one thing that you know, we told all these guys, and a lot of these guys told us when we were on the phone with them on the call was like, "I want to come in there in the respect of of my new teammates." So, when you have that mindset, then you you can kind of build and, and groom and, and improve. What's the number of undrafted guys you'll be able to sign? Seven. Th I don't know, Jim. We'll see kind of how it goes. <laughs> The room that you've got to add. Guys. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, you don't have to get to. You don't have to get to ninety. You know, um, tonight by midnight. You know, it's um, you're constantly looking. I mean, we we've found guys. You know, that were. I mean, I got an email on a Sunday, and it was like I watched the guy, and it's the guy looks pretty good. He comes in, he's a rookie tryout, ends up making the team or making the practice something. You know, there's always those guys. Um, they don't necessarily have to have a home right now. We'll keep kind of combing through all that. Um, and the guys that, you know, they're on our board, but maybe we've got guys ranked higher. And for some whatever reason, they don't have a, a spot, you know, after the draft. Um, take another look at them and see what happens. What do you think about the Phillips as a return man? Say that again, David. About Phillips as a returner. Like, what, what do you see Co there? Confident, um, fields it well, um, gets one cut, gets upfield. You know, he's not trying to circle up the, the you know, on the return game and, and bounce it outside. Um, he's tough. He's gritty, um, which is the mindset you kind of have to have at that position um, to be able to, you know, look at a ball coming down, knowing that guys are barreling down on you. Make sure you field it cleanly, quickly transition your eyes down and find the coverage, make one guy miss, and then get vertical. You guys you. picked Hassan. These videos started coming on Twitter of him just knocking guys over on special teams. What do you think of his ability in that department? We like that. Yeah. Guys, when they run down and knock guys over on special teams, that's a, that's a check plus. What's the biggest difference between college and pro special teams? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think there's. I mean, I think the players are probably as you know overall are are faster. Um, and you've got you've got guys who have played those positions professionally um, and really gotten good at their craft, and they know the savviness that it takes to play special teams. Like you don't have to always be the fastest guy. It's about instincts. It's about speed, but it's about anticipation. It's about you know, hey, I see the return is going this way. You know, they're studying tape. I mean, they're studying the return game, much like an offense or defense is studying plays. Like, this is this type of return or this is this type of block, and here's how I'm going to attack that. And they can recognize that uh, running as fast as they can down the field and still having the mindset that, you know, they're throwing their body into, you know, another 220-plus pound, you know, guy and, you know, Trying to impact that play. Do you think you've got the same. five offensive line starters on the on the roster right now, John. Do you feel confident about that, or is there still a chance, as you say, you know, in the in the months ahead, that there may be another person or two added? Yeah, I mean, we're excited about about that group. We're able to add some pieces. Um, looking forward to the competition level. Um, you know, we're certainly we'll take stock of of the players that are out there in the post draft, uh, the players that are out there in the veteran, you know, the veteran world who you know kind of 
it was those guys are kind of waiting until after the draft, see how the draft falls, and then you know they kind of settle into to homes potentially. Um, but we'll look at all that and see if there's guys that are out there that might can improve and help us. What the you know as I said earlier, what are the financial implications of you know maybe adding one of those guys? One of the areas where Campbell maybe needs to to grow is comfort in space, better in space. I think he's uh, I think he's a cerebral player in in space. Um, you know, I think that he's, you know, he's he's traditionally been more of a downhill between the tackles type of, of linebacker, uh, which certainly lends itself well, uh, well to special teams. But I think that his intelligence and his and his savviness um, is there as a foot as an overall football player. You know, it's just the um, you know the transition ability and hey, maybe I don't have to go to this spot athletically. I can kind of be here because I I know the route concepts or wherever I might fit in the coverage. Quite the same build, but does Theo Jackson have a chance maybe to fill some of that role that Dane Crookshank had in the last couple of years in sub packages? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think that you know the one. Th I mean, the thing we liked about Theo is we do we do think he's got a home in, in the kicking game, and, and I like his versatility uh, on defense. I think that he can play a couple different positions. Uh, he was an intelligent guy when we you know when, when we spent time with him. Um, can play safety, can play down around the line of scrimmage. He may can play, you know, in a bigger nickel package, you know, on, on some matchup things. He ran well. Um, so was excited that when he was there and, you know, saves us a plane ticket and he can just kind of drive over and, and get rolling. How much does that mean, John? Not that you sought out to do it, but to be able to get a kid from Nashville and all the emotion that, that I think we that. started a trend because it seemed like when we took Theo, there was a bunch of local products that, that went off the board you know, back to back to back to back, you know. Uh, it, I think Atlanta took a tight end that's from Atlanta, a kid from Georgia. So, I don't know, maybe we started the trend there. But, yeah, it's cool. It's cool when you, you know, when there's a guy that's that's grown up here and he's probably, you know, probably been to several of our games as a kid growing up and um, to now play for that I could imagine. Um, I know what it felt like for me to come here in the role. I mean, I wasn't athletic enough to play professionally. I was barely athletic enough to play collegiately. Um, but to be for the hometown team, I think that's pretty cool. Phillips We've said he thought he was maybe faster than the time he ran. Does he play fast? And, and what made him so successful uh, in scoring touchdowns? Uh, I think it's his determination and his toughness and his, and his grit. And you see that with players. I mean, there's some players that run you know, you know, four three or whatever, but when they put the pads on, they slow down for whatever reason or they don't play to maybe to that speed. Um, I think he certainly plays, you know, plays to his to his speed um, because he's so tough and he's so gritty and he's so competitive. Do you feel the occasion and all things did he get with three years in a Chip Kelly system, you think? I, that'd be a question for him, you know, and, and, and maybe Chip. I don't really I'm not real well versed in, in Chip's offense, so um, but I know that you know he's um, he knows how to get open and catch. You know he was impressive at the you know certainly impressive at on the UCLA tape when you watch him. But um, when it, when you're at the East West when I was at the East West you know and I got to sit down with him for 20 minutes and visit with him and talk to him and get to know him as a guy, and then watching him at practice, it just looked like he understood leverage of DBs and you know I can set this guy up this way and he's going to take it and I'm going to go that way to give myself some space. John, with taking Theo Jackson today, Roger McCreary yesterday, do you feel that maybe you have more flexibility, more maybe opportunities to move guys around in, in the secondary, both at corner and, and safety, just because of what you, you've done? Yeah, I, th I mean, I certainly hope so. I mean, I hope we, that, that those guys will give us some, you know, some flexibility and some uh, opportunities to use their versatility and, and put them in positions to – you know, maybe give some matchup type coverages for us. That, that's for the coaches to determine that. But, you know, I think from a skill set standpoint, um, you know, we certainly like Roger and we like Theo, and we think that they're going to, you know, be good football players and come in here and help us. How do you feel about edge, edge depth right now? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we were able to get some, you know, get Ola back, and we've got some guys coming back, getting Harold back. Um, you know, we'll continue to look at that position, but I think that, you know, we certainly, you know, the, that position group paid um, dividends for us kind of towards the end of the season. We were able to kind of get those games going and get pressure on the quarterback. Um, but we like it. Rashad Weaver almost a bonus rookie because of how much time he missed last year. Yeah, I've been, really, been working really hard. You know, he's been in here constantly and, you know, he's, he's doing better and, you know, excited. I know he's chomping at the bit uh, to get back out there. 
next couple of weeks like for these guys where they get here before the mini camp? Well, you better be working, Jim. Yeah, that's. Uh, communication with them, get them things to help them where they hit the. Yeah, we'll get we'll get them things and kind of you know, you know have conversations with them and. Um, um, but yeah, it's 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 about, and we tell all of them. It's you know, when we when after the call, and um, you know, certainly the pro days that I went to, or guys that I worked out. Um, the it's the most important time when you think you're done, just because you're done with your pro day. You know, you don't just sit back, relax, and and hang out. Like you've got to you've got to start to prepare to go practice. You know, these guys have been training for vertical jumps and short shuttles and three cones for what two, three months now. They haven't been doing a ton of, hey, let's go play a football game activities. Uh, they've been trying to get their forty time down. So that's a different type of training than it is to you know go out and play football. So. Once the pro day is over and the workout's over, it's time to transition and get ready to play football. Um, they certainly have been playing it a long time. They know what it takes, and uh, that's the thing that we've stressed to them: is get ready for football shape. Mike, have any reaction to uh, to drafting a uh, Michigan running back that had a lot of success against Ohio State last season? Uh, he did. He did not, John. You know, he didn't. Uh, that didn't. He did not bristle uh, at it. Uh, he did not say O H I O, and um, he was just excited to add him to the team.